Where are we at? Society is a wave. The wave moves onward, but the water of which it is composed does not. The same particle does not rise from the valley to the ridge. Its unity is only phenomenal. The persons who make up a nation today, next year, die and their experience with them. Right? I can understand that this was probably a common belief. Like when you go back 150, 200, 500 years, right? Because... The life you have is the same that your parents and your grandparents ha had, right? They were all the same. It was all the same. It was kind of, well, not the same, but very similar. Static. Right? Stuff changes, right? But in the grand scheme of things, yeah, like waves. Right? You have different stuff were modern, but you still use the same tools. You still... I believe you spoke the same you language. Something, right. something everybody else in history done wrong. What, like eat the food, drink the water, and breathe the air? Right. A lot of people today really highlight the printing press and how it really changed a lot of things. And science has changed a lot of things. So this, this is an archaic way to look at the world. Right, because it does change, like it changes significantly, right? We who are alive today, we see it change during our lifetimes, right? Life was completely, like, society was completely different when I was a kid to what it is today. Right? The water moves on. I mean, I suppose you have to concede that it still is a wave. There's a lot of changes that happen that is just for us, us that are alive today. But it does change for the next generation and the next generation as well. But of course, there's a lot of changes that I perceive as being... As being society that is changing from my perception while it's just a wave, right? Like the pendulum of politics and whatnot. Some stuff don't change. Right? We're still humans, right? Evolution doesn't work. Like, yeah, humans are still the same. We want the same things. We'll learn new stuff along the way, though, that we pass on to the next generation. And that changes over time. That makes sense? Yeah. And probably the current generation, my generation, our generation, we who are alive today, are probably... Not always, but oftentimes we're probably kind of bad at... Ugh. Seeing and understanding what is the wave and what is not the wave, right? What is the actual tide, right? If we take that as a difference. Actually, that doesn't work either. No, progress. The changing of the tides. The movements of the oceans. Hmm. Not on says, I walked outside. It is still 90 degrees out there in the middle of the night. Oh, oof. That is... Man. That's got to be like a sauna. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky like that because the room I'm in right here, it is... Always way hotter than the outside. Oh man, I'm looking forward to moving. 90 degrees is too hot. It's just too hot. It's too hot. 
in the middle of the night? Did you at least get like a... A breeze on your face? To... Cool down a little bit from the outside? And so the reliance on property, including the reliance on government, which protect it, is the want of self-reliance. Wait, what does this mean? And so the reliance on property, including the reliance on governments, which protect it, is the want of self-reliance. Right, if you rely on property or governments, then you're not self-reliant, is that what it means? I completely disagree, right? I mean, not not necessarily that it has to be property, but stuff, right? Stuff and organization. Right. Can you build a house without a hammer? Or should you just be self-reliant and sleep out outdoors? In the snow? Or in the blistering heat? Should you just go out and sleep with the... With the bugs? I... Where do you draw the line? I suppose that is it, right? Where do you draw the line? And the text draws the line at one spot and I draw it another spot. And it's... I suppose it's good to question said line. Hmm. Not on says, thankfully I have air condition. Air conditioning, yeah. I, hmm. Check out the technology connections about heat pumps. They're cool. Hot as well. Heat pumps? Wait. They're cool and hot. Alright, I suppose a heat pump moves the heat somewhere and leaves the cold somewhere else. So they're cool and hot. Uh, where is this thing? Heat. Oh, right. Right here. Right, yeah, I'll, I'll check that out. Men have looked away from themselves and at things so long that they have be, they have come to esteem the religious, learned, and civil institutions as guards of property, and they deprecate assaults on these because they feel them to be assaults on property. I don't quite understand. No, says that's the one. Yeah, that is the one on heat pumps indeed. I'll check that out this afternoon. The things you own end up owning you. Is is this? I mean, if you change that around a little bit. You become dependent on the stuff you own. The hunter becomes dependent on the hunter's bow. Not only this, I learned a technique of sleeping on your arms and knees to isolate your core from the cold of the ground. On your arms and your knees. It's kind of like the fetal position, but with arms and knees to the ground. Kind of. But instead of well, are you sleeping like this, or just down? Yeah, I'm supposing like this. Arms and knees. Very similar to the fetal position, just flipped over. Oh, 
I'm curious, is that... I'm more curious about how good that is for your back, for your body, for your knees. No, Donner says, yeah, ki kind of. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of like that, yeah. I mean, you would be... Uh, your knees would be tense, stretched, right? The tendons in the knees would be stretched. I don't know about that. Well, maybe not. You could probably fiddle around with it a little bit. I, I often get stuck, right? It needs to be just right for me to be able to fall asleep. If I'm... If I'm lying in a way that's outside of my normal way of lying down, I can't sleep. They've come to esteem the religious learned and civil institutions as guards of property. I mean, I guess police is the guards of property. Guards of people and property. This, though, I mean, I don't know if... I don't know about the reasoning, but if you deprecate assault on these, I think that that I would I would agree that it's a problem, right? Assaults on like I don't mean physical assaults, but intellectual assaults on politics kind of require it, right? Being challenged. Because power corrupts, and you need to challenge them. Maybe even physical assaults, right? When necessary. That's a... Not necessarily a full-blown revolution, right? But... If they are misbehaving, then make them stop. Alright, and I would say, yeah. With comfort comes the deprecation of assaults on this institution, right? If you're comfortable in your life, like, you don't have a reason to attack these things, I suppose. Hmm. Not Honor says, it would take uh, some time getting used to. I can imagine, yeah. But if you were in a survival situation or otherwise exposed to the elements, it's an option to sleep without freezing to death. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Lowering the uh, lowering the um, risk of freezing to death. Yeah. But if you're out in winter, you're supposed to dig yourself down in the snow, right? That's super counterintuitive, but that's. Right, because you close yourself in and you trap the heat. Yeah, you trap the heat instead of letting the wind blow the heat away. I suppose digging yourself in, in that... That also makes a lot of sense, right? Don't stretch your legs out, but instead crawl up into a ball and protect your... Yeah, your main body heat. Not on just like making an igloo. Yeah, m more like a blanket of snow. But yeah, it's the same, same idea, yeah, making an igloo. Depending on the situation, right? If you have a day... Well, yeah, an igloo with fire. But that, that like, you would have to have all day ready. 
usually what you do when you're in that situation is like get back to civilization ASAP, right? So spending all that time making an igloo and a fire in winter. Maybe not. Actually, I, I'm not I'm not super well versed in this. Part of me wants to, like, after seeing that adventure video, just sleeping outdoors, just, just walking out into the forest and just walking a direction. Decide, oh, I'm gonna walk through this forest over there and just spend, like, a couple of days couple of days alone in the forest just traversing but that there would take like a lot of preparation you would bring the food and the heat and the stuff that you need right that would be an adventure hmm. not only says it totally depends on your situation exactly right if you're if you know that you are Days and days and days off, right? If if you're in a plane crash, for example, out in the middle of nowhere, and you know civilization, I mean, you won't make it, then yeah, make an igloo. Set up the fire. Stay put, wait for some someone to come for the rescue. Ah. Uh. Right. They measure their esteem of each other by what each has, and not by what each is. I think that's unfair. I think... When you meet a person, do you do that? Do you look at the stuff they own? I mean, strangers... You kind of do that because that's you don't know what a person is, right? In an urbanized society, right? If you first meet someone, that's we were talking about that yesterday about relationships, right? You start out by the um, shallow stuff, the sur the surface stuff. What is your stuff? What do you own? What kind of clothes are you wearing and whatnot? You start at that surface level, but the more you get to know a person, the more you move into personality and deeper understanding of the person. I think that happens. Not only says a lot of people do that, yeah. Yeah, but I think when you build a relationship, that's you don't just stop there, do you? I mean, it kind of feels like when you build a relationship that it's kind of inevitable to start judging of a person by their character and not by what they own. I suppose there are like I suppose there are like I've heard that, that thing about the gold digger, for example. Someone who's getting a sugar daddy or sugar mommy or whatnot. And maybe it's just all about the money and they never get to know each other. Right. Sleep in separate bedrooms or like never talk to each other. So I suppose this is this can happen. And I suppose I've seen that happen in work situations and whatnot. We just talk about the weather and nothing else. That's if you if we look at that way, right? Talk politics everywhere, that is what I say. It doesn't even have to be politics, right? Express your ideas and your inner self. Is that a personal preference? Is one better than the other? I don't think so. I think it's just personal preference, isn't it? Or is there... Is there a con to this? Actually, I can't... I can't really relate, right? To being a gold digger... So I don't...
There's probably both pros and cons. You protect yourself from emotional pain. Because you don't get anyone... You don't get close, but you miss out on, rela like, deeper relationships. If it's just missing out, I don't know. Not on says most of the time you don't build a relationship. Yeah, most of the time, right? Most of the people you run into, it's just surface area stuff, right? Like, what, what do you have? Right, if I run into... If I'm just out and about, and I notice someone having a t-shirt that says 42, I'm gonna, oh. Where do you have your towel? I don't know. Just do some Douglas Adams reference, right? Being all friendly by what the person has. But it won't get deeper than that. Most of the situations, right? Yeah. Not on says you wouldn't marry a woman who's rich. Of course I would. I mean, I would. Well, I wouldn't marry because I think I, I don't like the idea of marriage. Well, I might, right? If if it was important enough to whoever, whomever, since it's not very important to me, as long as it's not a religious marriage, I could be fine with it. I suppose. I think it's kind of dumb, but, um, yeah, I would definitely build a relationship with someone who's rich. Not because they are rich. Huh. Not Honor says, she'd have the resources to take care of you, make your life easy mode. Yeah, I mean, that sounds great, but, uh, actually, that, I could probably go that shallow route as well, but it would not be enough, right? That is not enough. That is the surface area stuff, right? What clothes you're wearing, how much money you have, and that's definitely a boon to start dating and building a relationship with someone. But... I don't... I don't see myself being able to l continue living... At that, like, just stopping right there and not deepening the relationship. Like, yeah. Like, I wouldn't move in with the person after, like, two weeks. Yeah. I would probably... Yeah, it would probably take a while and get to know a person before moving in together. Uh. No, 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 says, what if she was almost your perfect woman, but not quite? There is no such thing as the perfect woman. The perfect woman is a, an idea I, I might have in my head, right? Let's see, but not quite. Would you make an exception just because they're rich? Just deal with their faults? I mean, I think building a relationship in the depth like this is you take the good with the bad. And being rich would be a good thing from my perspective, right? Being a video gamer would be a good thing. Being philosophically inclined would be a good thing. Right? None of these things are deal breakers, though. Take the good and the bad, right? I could see myself building a relationship with a woman that has none of those things. Or all of them. Not on says, do you think gold diggers don't get to know the person they marry? I I don't I don't know, right? That's I can imagine that happening. Yeah. I can imagine that happening. I saw mm, The JCS psychology. I saw that video about a gold digger who hired a, a police hitman to kill her husband of six months. 
I suppose that's the reason why she actually did get to know him. Yeah, that um, that was my initial initial uh, idea, right? That you can't r resist getting to know one from the depths. But right, if you just live in the same house and then you rub your naked bodies together, but you never ever talk to each other. I could see that happening, right? Like, uh, take... I mean, I don't know if it's... A, if that's a real thing that happens. But I could imagine that it happens. I think it would be, probably be super fucking rare. But like, uh, have you seen the Big Lebowski? Like a bunny from that... Right? That husband, that wife, they didn't seem to know each other or have any interest in getting to know each other. Not really. It was more of a transactional relationship where that just... Right? She was treated as an object and he was treated as a wallet. And I can imagine that there are relationships like that. It wouldn't be for me, though. And I... I don't even know if I would say that that's a bad thing, that kind of relationship. If both parties are happy with said relationship and or structure, right? I think that's fine. Oh. But I would say that a norm, like in a relationship, if you marry someone, I would assume that you talk to said person and you get to know their perks, right? Even if you don't talk to the person, like you experience, you see, you learn their routine and what they are like a person, right? What their likes and dislikes are. That just, you just learn that by being near each other. Yeah, just proximity. Hmm. So that means I kind of don't get this. I don't get this sentence then, because they measure their esteem of each other by what each has, not by what each is, right? If you don't know what someone is, and you measure someone, you, the only thing you have to go by is what each has. That is the surface area relationship, right? That is just... Hmm. No, 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 says, I don't know. I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I like the, I like the questions. Ah, good questions indeed. I haven't really... I hadn't really thought about... Yeah. thought about that, but I would assume people can get happy in a transactional relationship. Yeah, definitely. Right, but a cultivated man becomes ashamed of his property out of out of new respect for his nature. A cultivated man becomes ashamed. That doesn't sound like cultivation to me. Like, a shame sounds like a negative emotion. If you cultivate yourself to become the best you can be, shame, like... Actually, I would actually say a lot of my understanding of this text, like, my interpretation of this text, and, like, hedonism and... Self-reliance is not being ashamed about yourself and your stuff. Especially he hates what he has. If he see that it is accidental, came to him by inheritance or gift or crime, then he feels that it's, uh, it is not having, it does not belong to him, has no root in him, and merely lies there because no revolution or no robber takes it away. And that's, we talked about that like a few days ago, right? About the privilege thing. And I... 
I think you ha if you have nice stuff and you're happy about said nice stuff, well, actually, I think you should cultivate happiness and gratefulness for having said inheritance or gift. Crime, I don't know. I suppose. From an, like, I suppose a criminal should embrace the stuff that they have stolen and be happy about that. That, that makes sense from a psychological self-reliance standpoint. If you throw ethics out the window. Yeah. And not hate it. Hmm. But that which a man does always by necessity acquire, and what the man acquires is living property, which does not wait the beck of rulers or mobs or revolutions or fire or storm or bankruptcies, but perpetually renews itself wherever the man breathes. All right, this difference is skill and property, right? Like your skill, that is something that stays with you no matter what. And I think that is super valuable. Build skills. Just don't let a text like this decide for you what skills you should. Right? <laughs> That's kind of ironic. But I have that criticism. Don't let this text decide for you what skills to build. Which, ironically, is what I read from this text. It kind of... Yeah, it kind of decides what skills one should build. Right. What is the good and strong man and what is the weak man? Yeah, the intellectual, that's a weak man. The businessman, the lawyer, that, those are weak men. Oh, the self-reliant the hunter, that's a strong man. So you have to be a hunter, but... Yeah, I don't know. Thy lot or portion of life, said the Caliph Ali. Alright. Thy lot or portion of life is seeking after thee. Therefore, be at rest from seeking after it. Alright, find yourself. Ah. That's a... Isn't that a, like a common thing that happens in late teenage years? But you do stuff to find yourself. I did that, right? Late teens, early, yeah, around the tweens, I think there's called, like early 20s. Actually, a lot of the teenage years, like trying stuff out, figuring out. I, th I think I still do that. Figure out who I am as a person. Because it's something that changes, it's not static. Hmm. Our dependence on these foreign goods leads us to our slavish respect for numbers. The political parties meet in numerous conventions. The greater the concourse and with each new uproar of announcement, the delegation from Essex. I didn't get that reference. I do have a respect for numbers, though, because of pragmatic reasons. Not on says a tween is a child between the ages of 9 and 12. Oh! Oh. I thought it was a mix between teen and 20. So it was a tween, like 18 to 22. That's what I thought. Is it like... Yeah. Then I don't understand the etymology of the word. Alright. Prepub or something like that would make more sense to me. Prepubescent? Pre Preteen, like green. 
Mm. Actually, I'm a little bit curious. What is the etymology? What is the etymology? Can we get... Do we get an etymology from here? I don't remember. Contraction of... Betwe between. All right. Also, tween, tween, a youngster, 10 and 12, considered old to be a child and too young to be a teenager. Also, maybe it is in between. It is contraction of between and teen. And something like that, maybe? Because you're in between childhood and teenage years. In between. Alright. That was fairly straightforward. Mm. All right. The, de the Democrats from New Hampshire, the Whigs of Maine, the young patriot feels himself stronger than before by a new thousand of eyes and arms. In like manner, the reformers summon conventions and vote and resolve in multitude. Not so, O oh friends. Will the god deign to enter and inhabit you, but by a method precisely the reverse? It is only as a man puts off all foreign support and stands alone that I see him to be strong and to prevail. Yeah, but, it, like, a man throwing off all foreign support and stands alone will lose against the ten people that are using the support of nine other people, right? That man will lose. Like... He, so he's like literally weaker than those 10 people. He is weaker by every recruit to his banner. Is not a man better than a town? No. No. Quite literally not. A town can achieve so many more things than a man. Right? Ask nothing of men, and in the endless mutation, thou only firm column must present, uh, presently appear the upholder of all that surrounds thee. He who knows that power is inborn, that he is weak because he has looked for good out of, out of him and elsewhere, and so perceiving, throws himself unhesitate, unhesitantly... Oh. Without hesitation on his thought, instantly writes himself. Stands in the erect position, commands his limbs, works miracles. Just as a man who stands on his feet is stronger than a man who stands on his head. I don't know about that. Blasphemous town can also fuck things up way more than any man. Exactly, right? Of course they can, because they are way more powerful, right? The more power... The more things you can you can fuck up things, yeah, definitely. The more people working towards a common goal, actually, I would even say that not only can they fuck up things more, they are also more likely to because of points of failure, right? The increased amount of points of failure increases the likelihood of fucking things up, right? Blasphemous. Does the good justify creating more bad? Uh, I mean... That's... I think that's... That's an interesting question. I haven't thought in that for a while. Does the end justify the means? I would say in general, no. Yeah. I would say in general, no. Like, 
But I would say that that is not an argument against the town. I don't see it as such. I see it as an argument of the methodology of the town that does fuck up, right? I think it as an argument to improve on the town's methodology rather than just tearing down the town. You know me, I'm not very impressed about tearing stuff down. Yeah, I think I see it as an argument for improvement. Yeah. Look at the bad, improve on the bad. Blasmus, hmm. good job. What do you mean, good job? Who did a good job? I mean, if some people did a good job, that's fine. Huh. Blasmus, yeah, you just want me to keep moving forward, even though, even though moving forward then just creates more and more problems. Not necessarily, right? I say improve. Improve might be taking a step back. Right? I don't mind taking a step back. Right? I think it's a good idea to... Hmm. Coal, for example. Take coal. Take a step back. Maybe use less electri electricity. Take a step back. Use less e electricity for a while, right? Yeah. A pendulum again. I, I think it's a good idea. Take a step back and just slow the fuck down. And uh, electricity stuff, right? I think we're burning way too much fossil fuels. For example, that's a grand... That's just one example, right? It's just one example. But I think there's probably a lot of examples like that. Where you take a step back and, alright, just say, this isn't working. Let's go back to how we used to do it. Because, right, politically, we think that was the better way to do things. So yeah, take the step back. Oh, I don't mind that at all. Blasmus says, we know how government improves. I mean, over time, I have seen both. I've seen stuff that I would call improvements and changes for the worse. What's the opposite of an improvement? Something that... Uh, like moving forward to something bad? It's, that's not called an improvement. Improvement implies that you like something, right? What is moving forward, but you dislike it? Yeah. And I would say defin definite improvements, right? Go back 200 years and look how government was working then and how it's working now. I think there are a lot of improvements that have been made. And a lot of, probably a few things, that, probably a lot of things that would be worse as well, depending on what thing we're talking about. Hmm. Blasphemous propaganda will teach you to like these improvements. Mm, yeah, sure, I can see that happening. Right. Just like I can see that someone by propaganda think it's a good idea to send bombs and just kill random people. Yeah. People can fall for that type of propaganda as well, right? That's propaganda can I don't know if I like the word teach. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Propaganda will teach you to like these improvements. Maybe, maybe teach is a good word. Yeah. Just, usually when I think of the word teach, I think of something else. But it's probably a good word for it. Convince? Hmm. Yeah. Actually, I think if we're talking about propaganda, I think teach is a more impactful word. Right? Even if it's not the optimal semantic word, I think it's fine, right? I like that statement. Propaganda will teach you to like these 
improvement. Yeah, I like that as a as another propaganda sentence, right? Propaganda to fight propaganda? Sure. So I can get behind that, it's just... Because uh. I'm not even sure convince. Convince kind of would imply that you would have thought something differently, right? That you did have something else in mind, but then you were convinced about something else. Teach kind of makes more sense, right? Because propaganda happens... But if you don't, if you have never thought about something, and then you're exposed to said propaganda, and... Yeah, so that teach probably works better than convince, I think. I like nitpicking semantics. I think both w words would probably work fine, but my preference would probably be teach, even though my first reaction was the opposite. Hmm. All right. So use all that is that is called fortune. Yeah, I like that. Most men gamble with her and gain all and lose all as her wheel rolls. Nice. But do thou leave as unlawful these winnings and deal with cause and effect the chancellors of God? Yeah, that... That kind of feels exactly what I was saying just like a few minutes ago, right? Don't feel shame of your stuff. Yeah. Don't feel shame of your stuff, right? Gamble. Sure, I, I'm not much for gambling myself, but... Sure, gamble with fortune. Try your best. Try your worst. No, try your best. And if you end up with a lot of nice stuff... Definitely don't feel ashamed about these stuff. Yeah. I mean... I think if you put the effort in, I think you could feel both grateful and proud. Right? Because grateful to Lady Luck, but also proud of your own achievement, right? I did a good job. In the will work. Uh, wait. In the will work and acquire, and thou hast chained the wheel of chance, and shall sit hereafter out of fear from her rotations. Wait. In the will work and acquire, and thou hast chained the wheel of chance, and shall sit hereafter out of fear from her rotations. Didn't quite get that one. Fear can be debilitating and... But on, on the other hand, right, if you fear Lady Luck or Wheel of Chance... Whatever, if you have said fear, I mean... That's an ample opportunity to, do, to be brave. Right? And don't get debilitated by it. Maybe? I don't know. A political victory, a rise of rents, the recovery of your sick, or the return of your absent friend, or some other favorable event, raises your spirits. Yeah. And you think good days are preparing for you. Do not believe it. <laughs> Murphy's Law, eh? Expect the worst. Nothing can bring uh, you peace but yourself. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. I mean, you can have good days and bad days, but be in peace with yourself, right? This, this is uh, an argument for stoic things, right? I mean, you have to kind of... Nothing can bring you peace but yourself. That's... Not... A hundred percent true, but it's... 
it makes sense to have this attitude as a person, right? Yeah. We talked about that before, like the locus of control. You are in control of your life. That is probably the most beneficial attitude. Well, not the most, but it is a very beneficial attitude to have. There is a lot of correlation with being at peace when you feel like you're in control and you're an agent of yeah, of your own life, right? If you believe in yourself, yeah. But there is like understand there is understanding of how the world works and there is like intellectual understanding that also you're not only in control, right? Be fluid in your thoughts would be my thing to say in response to that, I think. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. I I don't even know what that means. I mean, isn't isn't peace something you achieve through mental practice? I don't know if you need principles to do that. Right. A lot of people say it's like the root is meditation, right? And meditation... Well, it depends on how you define principles. Principles being a w vague word here, right? Maybe you're a principled man, you meditate every day, and that will bring you peace. I... Is that principles? I suppose. But that doesn't seem like it fits with the rest of the text. I would guess that with the rest of the text it would be self-reliant principles, right? Hmm. Blasphemous masturbate every day? Oof. That doesn't... Well... I don't know. That did not bring me peace as a teenager. I don't know how that is a principle either. Hmm. I suppose I didn't do it as... Uh, what's it called? Meditation, anyway, so... Hmm. Alright. But it feels like... It's like we're finished, so... What about this self-reliance thing? suppose when you see something extreme you take the other extreme side so right I would urge anyone to follow their individual will but I would not urge them to do it instead of conforming to social ex expectations right they overlap right I think that you can follow your individual will and do the introspection and see what do you want out of life, right? Figure that stuff out. You can do that by yourself. It, it's not the opposite of conforming to social expectations because that's a criticism I had oftentimes is that the feeling I got from the text was that this was more important. Reject the confirmation of social expectations. That was more important than the actual introspection right there wasn't a lot of talk about introspections right it was more about tearing this down which i suppose that is often how rhetoric works hmm. no donor says it was boring i don't like this writing style it was too long I didn't find it completely... I got bored of it. It was too long and too repetitive. And... Vague. Hmm. Not on says I don't like this writing style. Well, there's two kinds of people. Those who write as an ego and those who actually immediately know what they're talking about and can explain it simply. Two 
two kinds of people. Those who write as an ego. I wouldn't go that black and white. I think... From, like... We have science text, right? This is not a science text. This is a... This is purely rhetorical, right? It's trying their... Uh, like it's trying to be poetic and whatnot, right? There, are, There is a lot of stuff to rhetorics. And Logos just understanding a subject and can explain it simply. That's one part of rhetorics. One part that I wish people spent more time, because that's my favorite. That's my favorite part of rhetorics. Right, actually, we can open those three legs up. Uh, right, the three pillars. Where are they? The art of persuasion. Uh, where are they? Right, if we just take... Here we go. Logos, pathos, and ethos. Logos is thought and the word, right? That is under like intimately uh, knowing this topic and can explain it in uh, a what were you saying? Yeah, can explain it simply. That's logos, right? That is making yourself understood, right? Both understanding what yourself is talking about and making other people understand what you're talking about. But then we have pathos, which is emotion, right? When you're trying to convince people to do one thing or another. That's the emotion of the thing, right? And that's that's the poetic stuff, right? That's the emotion. Trying to elicit some emotion from your reader to convince them, right? That's why anecdotes is a thing, right? in um, political stuff. That's why you use specific examples where you, like, yeah, make it, like, a, into a story. You see that very often, right? Hmm. Not only says, is the poet a communicator? I would say so, yeah. Poet is a communicator, right? Yeah. They're just... Oh, it is a communicator that uses a lot of pathos. It's a lot about just the emotion. Ah. Experience. Making people feel stuff. And that... I understand why this is more popular and more used, right? Because at our core, we are emotional beings. So if you want to convince someone through rhetorics, through the art of persuasion, being good at... Elis like triggering the emotions that you want to trigger, that is good rhetorics. And then there is the ethos, which is how, mm, in my mind, I th I think of this as uh, authority, right? You try to build up an authority and a trustworthiness in your audience that they trust you and feel like you are an authority on what you're talking about. That's, for example, if you've seen medication commercials or pain pills commercials or toothpaste or whatever, it is very common for them to just have white coats on because that it has been studied and just having that white coat that we uh, associate with doctors for most, for a lot of people, yeah, for most people, that increases the trust and the authority of what a person is saying. That That is like that, yeah. If you study rhetorics, these are the three pillars of rhetorics, right? And if you want to, if your goal is to persuade people, you sh like a Proper rhetorician should use all these three. 
to convince, persuade someone of something. Yeah. So... I, so, yeah, I, t I take it like... Personally, um, I prefer... Right? This is more convincing to me. Logos, like the actual words. Understanding of the subject. And communicating thusly. And I, I mean, my personal perspective and my opinion, right... It, from how I these sometimes get in the way, but I think that's just because these are more common, or maybe that's just my bias. I know I I just see these because they frustrate me more, and we have a bias towards stuff we don't like, right? We have a negative bias, so maybe I don't know. And I mean, the text, also talking about this, right? The text did show its age, right? It's an old text, old, old text, like mid-1800s somewhere, I think. And a lot of the stuff was like... Common knowledge today. Well, maybe not common knowledge, but it is stuff that... That I have learned from my stuff that just doesn't work. Like the, a lot in the ending, right? About saying that how society is static. That, right? Just take from the time this was written and what it, society looks like now. It's very different, right? So it's thinking that it's static. It's, yeah, showing its age. All right. Self-reliance. Another key point is emphasis on following one's own voice rather than an intermediary. Right? Here again, I would not go this by... Like, that's my main criticism, I think, about the binary thing, right? Do this instead of that. And I think that's... What's that? Fal uh, false dichotomy, right? It's binary thinking in a way that I don't think makes sense, right? This one does not exclude that one. This one, right? Your voice and other voices right you are not the smartest person in the world there might be other people that you can learn stuff from but i would still say it like but so what how, how i would change this around would be learn from others but integrate them into your own voice right? because i kind of think that everybody is following their own voice Always. Just don't let the church or the state or the teacher be the final say. Be critical of your sources. Yeah, there we go. Be critical of your sources. That is how I would rewrite this for it to make sense for me. Encourages his readers to be honest in their relationships with others. Yes, definitely. More of this. That is something that is difficult. That I I have had problems with this, right? So that's... My problem with the... What I felt was that... The, when I read the text, this is not what I felt. This is not what I read. I felt... My interpretation of what I was reading often was be rude to everybody, which is, yeah, right? Throw etiquette out the door, throw ethics out the door. That is a feeling I got from this text and just be honest. Don't be a douchebag. Right? You can do both. Be honest and not be a douchebag. Hmm. Right, posits the effects of self-reliance. Altering religious practices, encouraging Americans to stay at home and develop their own culture, and focusing on individual rather than societal progress. Again with the rather than. You can do both. 
You can stay at home and develop your own culture, and you can go out and meet people and develop the culture of the society, right? Uh, I mean, develop your own culture and then impregnate the rest of society with said culture. Or, you can go both ways. I think that, yeah. Yeah, I think it went on and on and on, and it was, was like... Yeah, too long for my tastes. If you are more Logos-focused, you can probably say it way shorter. I think... Yeah, I think Athos is also being more, sh like, shorter, right? You don't need to go on and on like I do, for example. I go on and on and on. That lowers my ethos, I think, right? But I don't I don't try to be an authority on the things I say. I, I don't, like, my ultimate goal in going on and on and on is not about persuasion necessarily. I mean, it's a little bit of persuasion. But I'm not trying to be the authority on, like, most of the things I say, some of the things I try to be an authority on, I suppose, but you don't, you don't get that by going on and on and on. Well, pa pathos is, could be going on and on and on. Maybe. All right. So, 11.42. 20 minutes to lunch. Maybe a quick Path of Exile map before lunch. Let's close these things. Yeah, a quick Path of Exile map before, before lunch. All right. Maybe this before lunch. I've been thinking... I got excited about this, but I kind of... Hmm, maybe I should remove it. It's just five minutes, right? Let's leave it there for now. But we're done with self-reliance. That took a while. 